this memory is so crystal clear in my mind as if it was yesterday. This was a little girl who walked down the stairs of a basement and saw a beautiful white dog sitting there with her puppies. And as she walked to her, the, one of the puppies stumbled and came towards her. She picked that puppy up and the joy on her face was priceless. She walked up the stairs, went to her parents and told her that I am going to take him home. That girl is nobody else. That is me standing in front of you. That was my first, first encounter with an animal. And from then, there started a love affair, an eternal love affair with the animals. My life has been all along been with animals. And that day, I did not leave the room without taking that pup home. And I would always be doing rescue missions, feeding animals, and doing numerous encounters like this. And I cannot thank my mother, because you can imagine a 10-year-old doing a rescue mission, where would all those animals land up? They would land up in their own house. And every time, my mother welcomed me with open arms with those animals. Not the less that she didn't have too much to do. She, my parents were doctors, they were working, they had their own busy lifestyle, and they just let me myself. And I cannot thank them enough for doing that for me. And with Boski, my first pet, came a host of animals. I have lived my life with wildlife, with pets. I have lived with cats. I have lived with dogs. At one point of time, I had a pet deer. And I had turtles, I had horses, and I have a, a lovely time that I spent with an elephant. So you'd be wondering, where is this woman coming from? She, she Was she living in a zoo? No, that was not the case. These animals were with me in my house. And my grandparents' farm would border to the forest. And there is where I would spend my summer vacations with the horses and with the elephants. But you would be thinking, what am I leading you? Too. I'm leading you to something that really beautifully unfolded in my life. When I was growing up, you know, uh, things happen, life takes its course, whether we like it or we do not. We have signed up for things in life which are not very, we are not very sure of and neither we are aware of. So when I was growing up, my parents started separating out and that was a time when I would spend my entire time with my animals. I was always an introvert. I would love spending time with animals and being with them. But at that point of time, they became my recluse. That was my solace. I would go there and one day when I was sitting with Boski and I was just quiet. Usually when I was with my animals, I would play, they would come to me, they would cuddle with me. But that day was different. I was sitting in silence. And in that silence, she could sense my sorrow, my pain, and her voice I could hear in my ears. Something moved. We came out of the body. It was like an out of a body experience when my soul and her soul united and we started connecting with the universal language. Have you ever thought about that? That many a times you have somebody right sitting next to you and you're thinking something and immediately that person says that. There, may, there are many times when you were thinking about your friend and that very moment he calls you. How does this happen? There is a language of energy, a language which the entire universe uses. This is our nonverbal communication. But what happens, you know, in life, we kind of quieten it. The day it happened with me, I still get goosebumps, you know, a chill is running down my spine right now. The day that happened with me, I was very overwhelmed, very excited. But at the same time, I was very scared. You can imagine a 10-year-old child having that out-of-body experience with an animal speaking to her. I was scared. I didn't want to be different. I didn't want to be judged because our society has certain norms. We have to live a certain way. We have to behave in a certain way. We have to accept things in a certain way. And this just jumped out of me absolutely out of the box. And that was the time when I realized that I have unlocked something which is amazing. And as life happened, you know, this 10-year-old girl who could talk to animals was covered with worldly stuff. 
my parents wanted me to pursue a profession i got into a profession i got married i did so many things i helped my husband set up businesses i helped my family set up two schools i have headed many organ educational institutions i am an iso auditor for uh, educational institutes and i set up couple of more businesses for myself but guess what doing all this was not giving me any happiness it was making me more and more stressed out i was getting more involved in the worldly stuff and my life was getting as if it was all a tangled mess because i had spread myself thin i was working in so many areas and there was no peace that i was achieving and then you know what happened somehow the 10 year old uh, girl started coming back to me i have these two beautiful pets in my house zara and zina and these two beautiful girls in my life i address them as my children but just for clarity they are dogs you know so these two beautiful girls who came into my life they changed everything for me how by their journey the pain they were going through zara was suffering from an enlarged heart she was uh, um, ha- she was plagued with blindness and diabetes zina was su- battling cancer and i was internally battling so many things in my life i have a congenital birth defect which is called as keratoconus where the cornea of the eye is deformed i cannot barely see all of you clearly because this eye has two rings and the right one hardly can see but you know when god takes away one thing from you he gives you something more he gave me the vision and the insight to see way and beyond so with zara and zina i was struggling and i was finding answers you know their passing away left me with a slew of questions that why is it happening why by my taking such good care still i am facing these challenges with them did i do enough or not was their life meaningful or not and while i was going through all this my animals guided me to my mentor who kind of helped me hone my skills into animal communication i was guided to daniel mackenon and then when i was there and i started learning and understanding that our animals are our guides our healers our teachers i know i may sound a little esoteric to a lot of you but my work does not cannot be quantified cannot be analyzed you can only feel my work it's more about feelings it's more about emotions it's more about sensing it cannot be dissected and analyzed so let me quickly tell you what do i do and how do i do i am an animal communicator and this is what happens you know in all this talk of the animal i lose myself i always lose myself so let me introduce uh, you uh, to me i am dr parul chaudhary i am the founder of humans of animal land this is an organization which works and speaks for animals i help lot of par- pet parents get clarity to what their animals want from them and how they can resolve their behavior issues so um when i started out uh, this work it happens very beautifully you just need to be present in the moment if you are up for it we can do a quick exercise why don't you all gather yourself and bring yourself back to the chair many a times we are sitting on the chair but we are not on the chair our energy is scattered everywhere around so this work starts when you quieten yourself when you are present in the moment when you bring your energies back to here our animals are talking to us all the time and let me tell you how do they do that you will be surprised in how simple ways they are connecting to you in your life so if you have a dog a cat or any other animal they see you now you'll say parul are you joking i'm standing right here this is my physical essence absolutely they can see me no i'm talking about a blind dog can see you they can see the spiritual essence that you have they can hear you they can hear the thoughts that are going inside your mind and you're not speaking they can feel you they can feel your emotional state they can feel are you happy are you sad and then they connect the dots and that's how they process you so let me give you a quick example you decided to give a pill to your pet and you have the pill in your hand and you're just walking up to your pet without saying anything and he decides to get up and move away why because he could read that thought in your mind that i have a pill in my hand i'm going to take it to my pet and go to give him but it's very bitter i'm not very sure whether he's going to like it or not so they are sensing us they are using the universal language the language of energy we are all energy beings we are emitting energy there is an energy exchange right now also happening i'm talking all of you are listening but there is an energy exchange between all of us here so 
the animals use that universal language because they have not forgotten to connect with the base that is the mother nature, with the mother earth, they are very grounded and connected. And we in our busy lives are just moving on from one thing to the other without being connected to the world that we are living in. So I know today I'm not encouraging all of you to become animal communicators or healers, though it would be a much better place if we could all do that. But what I'm just trying to tell you that this work that I do helps a lot of animals and a lot of people understand things. And let me tell you how, you know, the universe talks to us in whispers. Have you, has anybody experienced that ever? That sometimes there'll be very subtle ways when the universe is reaching out to you. Now, a lot of people are aware, thanks to the social media, so many things happening. You know the number sequence, how the, uh, the numbers speak to you, how you just see a feather and there is a meaning behind it. There is so much happening around we, which gives you messages and clues. Similarly, our animals talk to us in whispers. So, and then when we don't listen to them in whispers, then what happens? It's a very classic example. When I was growing up, if my mother would call me, she would take my name. And if I would not listen, then she would be a little louder. And then even if I don't listen, she'll be even louder. And the fourth thing in my generation, when I was growing up, she would come and give me a whack and say, aren't you not listening to what I'm saying? Similarly happens with animals. Today we talk about animals, their behavior issues, their biting and so much other stuff. Why is it happening? Because we are not listening to that whisper. When we are not listening to that whisper, they, they are louder. They will present a behavior to you. Then when you are not paying attention to that behavior, they will convert into biting or shredding. If you are not even listening to that, they exhibit a larger behavior. All they are trying to do is to help you, to work with you, to make you understand. Let me give you an example in that also. You have a dog at home who is shredding furniture. The dog is not interested in shedding the furniture, he's nothing to do, he's not against your furniture. What is he trying to tell you? He's trying to tell you, look at yourself, your energy is everywhere. I want you to ground yourself, center yourself. I want you to accept yourself the way you are. And these kind of things have come up in numerous animal communication readings that I do, where the animal's behavior is just a reflection of our behavior. They are either mirroring our behavior or they are just magnifying that behavior to get our attention to the fact that they are helping us. How I met Boski was not a coincidence. I had a soul contract. When I was not in my body and Boski was not in her body, we had a soul contract that we had to get together and come here and present ourselves in this world and work in a different way. I'm sure all of you agree. You understand that we are here for a particular purpose and a reason. So, so are the animals. I would invite you all to experience this and understand the beauty of having animals in our existence because we are meant to coexist with them. They are spiritual beings having an animal experience. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. If you see the essence of it, we are all same and we are helping each other in our day-to-day -day life. We just have to open ourselves up. So I just want to leave you with that thought that tomorrow when you see an animal on the road, you're feeding a cow or a crow comes by or there's a squirrel outside your window, take a break. Think why I'm having this animal into my space. What is it it's trying to tell me? There is a meaning behind it. There's a relevance behind it. This didn't happen because of a coincidence. So once you start opening yourself up to this universal language, connecting with mother nature, you will understand that how in many different ways they're guiding you and helping you. And being an animal communicator is not something which only is a privilege to some. Anybody who's willing to quieten themselves, be present in the moment, do a little meditation practice and understand how to get messages. Animals are sending you messages through sights, through sound, through images, through knowings and feelings. And you can do it anytime. I would encourage you to go home, sit in front of your dog or pet or even a human, you know, and just try to send a message. Just quieten yourself and ask a question and you see how they respond to you. I would encourage you to, you know, challenge your own boundaries about how you think about animals, how you think about nature, how you think about energy. Just tread that path because the animals are all waiting to give you your stories, to tell the, uh, you the messages that they have for you. So I would just leave you with that. Are you ready to listen?
Thank you.